House Durandan had been the kings of the Stormlands since the Dawn Age of Westeros, and the line of Storm Kings had survived the millennia, overpowering the children of the forest, securing the borders of their kingdom, assimilating the Andal invaders, and at one point controlling half the reach, the whole of the Riverlands, and even planting the crowned stag banner of their house on the shores of the Sunset Sea. However, the rise of the Ironborn in the centuries before the conquest of Aegon the Conqueror slowly eroded the borders of the kingdom back to their current positions today. However, the Stormlands did see a resurgence in the decades before Aegon's conquest, with the young king Argalac Duridan. The feared warrior gave the growing power of the Ironborn kings a moment of pause. But in his old age, with the rise of Harren the Black, the realm of the Storm Kings was at threat of being overrun by the Ironborn. Harren the Black, the king of the Isles and the Rivers, was nearing the completion of his massive castle, Harrenhal, on the shores of the God's Eye, and was said to be looking for more conquest. Argalac had grown afraid of Harren, so he proposed an alliance with Aegon the Conqueror. It is believed he wanted to create a buffer zone between his kingdom and Harren's. With House Targaryen in the middle, he offered the hand of his maiden daughter Argella in marriage, as well as the Dowry Lands, though much of these lands were in fact in the possession of Harren the Black. Aegon refused, and instead offered the hand of his best friend and rumoured half-brother Oris Baratheon. Argalac took this as a grave insult that the offer of a bastard didn't fit the position and history of the Storm Kings. He had the hands of Aegon's envoys cut off. In a twist of fate, it would be the very black-haired, dark-eyed, base-born half-brother of Aegon who would become the very downfall of House Durandan, the downfall he was trying to avoid. Argalac sent the envoys back to Aegon with a message. These hands are the only hands you will be receiving. Aegon the Conqueror called his banners and took counsel with his lords and his sisters. Then the Conqueror sent ravens to the rulers of the Seven Kingdoms. He informed them that there would be only one king in Westeros from now on. Those who bent the knee would keep their lands and titles, but those that did not would be destroyed. King Argalac refused to submit. The Storm Kings had never submitted in thousands of years of history. He would not be the first to do so. Aegon's conquest of the Seven Kingdoms was a war on many simultaneous fronts, only possible because of the power of the Targaryen dragons. After a few small initial skirmishes in the Crownlands, ended quickly by Visenya Targaryen and her dragon Vhagar, Aegon turned to deal with Harren the Black in Harrenhal, whilst Visenya then sought to pacify the Vale of Arryn. This left his youngest sister and wife, Rhaenys, along with their half-brother, Oris Baratheon, to deal with Argalac and the Stormlands. King Argalac called his banners and amassed his men at Storm's End the moment Aegon was sighted on the shores of Westeros. Whilst waiting for Rhaenys and Oris to march south, the word of the burning of Harrenhal and the downfall of Harren the Black reached the Storm King. Not wishing to sit inside his castle and burn to death like Harren, Argilac instead rallied his men and ordered them north to meet the Targaryen host in open battle. A bold move, and one Oris and Rhaenys had not expected or planned for. Argilac did have one thing in his favour, the size of his army. The Storm King had amassed a huge army, much larger than the Targaryen host, which even at its full strength, when not divided in three, was much smaller. Estimates suggest that the Stormlanders outnumbered the invaders two to one, with some historians going as far as saying three to one, giving them a healthy advantage, especially if they were to take a defensive position which would compound their advantage even further. However, Rhaenys and Oris already knew this and factored this into their battle plan. Knowing he was outnumbered, even with the Targaryen dragons, Oris knew he would take heavy losses and thus decided to take up a defensive position atop the hills of Bronzegate, north of Storm's End. As the Storm King's forces closed in on the Targaryens, a massive storm the like had not been seen for centuries broke out, which would give name to the coming battle. Even more bizarre is that moments before, the weather was clear and calm. It had become known as the Last Storm. Some would even take this as an omen for Durandan's victory. The Storm King was very confident. He had twice, maybe three times the men, and four times as many knights and heavy horses than his Targaryen foes. If he could press the attack quick enough before the Targaryens were ready, he could perhaps mitigate the power and danger their dragon Meraxxus presented. It would be fair to note that despite the tales of Harrenhal, Reaching Argilac, it could be assumed he did not truly understand the power of a dragon, perhaps thinking the tales had been exaggerated somewhat. Dragon or no dragon, the Storm King decided to press the attack. 
Argilac and his Stormlanders made three charges with his horsemen up the steep and muddy hills of Bronzegate, with no sign of Rainies and her dragon. But the very storm they had seen as a positive omen caused more difficulty than any positive effect. The horsemen were slowed by the thick mud created by the heavy downpour from the raging storm. This limited their impact and charging ability, but his spearmen did have better success, taking two of the three hills of Bronzegate. On the third and final charge, Argilac Duridan and his Stormlanders broke through the Targaryen line, and his knights charged in to fill the breach, only to be faced by Rhaenys and her dragon Meraxis, who slew most of Argilac's guard in one hot, fiery breath. In the panic and confusion that followed, the Storm King was thrown from his horse into the thick mud. As he rose, he came face to face with the man who was the cause of all his problems, Oris Baratheon, sword still in his scabbard. Oris offered the old king a chance to yield. Instead, Argilac drew his sword. The Storm King, like his ancestors before him, wished to die fighting. If this was to be the end of House Durandon, he wanted it to be a fitting one, a song that would be passed down through the ages, so the name Durandon would never be forgotten. He faced Oris Baratheon in single combat. Both men skilled warriors, both men took wounds, but it was Oris who would win the day, slaying the last Storm King. With Argilac's death, House Durandon, save for Argilac's only daughter, was gone. At his death, the battle came to a sudden end. After her father's death, Princess Argela Duridan barred the gates of Storm's End and declared herself the first Storm Queen. However, the small garrison left behind at Storm's End to protect the princess feared that Rhaenys and Raxis would simply burn them alive in their castle, just as Aegon had done at Harrenhal. They revolted against this so-called Storm Queen, and after a few days they delivered her to Oris Baratheon's camp, chained and naked. However, she did not share the fate of her father. House Durandon had come to an end, but that did not mean their blood or that of the Storm Kings would. Oris Baratheon treated the young woman kindly, removing her chains and shackles, and giving her food and wine. He would marry Argella, and was made Lord Paramount of the Stormlands by Aegon, as a reward for his service and loyalty. He took the stag sigil and the words of House Darrodon as his own, forming the new House Baratheon in its place. After thousands of years, House Durandon and the Storm Kings of Legend were no more, and nothing but dry ink in the dusty pages of history books. If Argella, if Argilac, could take any solace from the downfall of his house and his kingdom, it would be that the blood of House Durandon would flow through that of the new House Baratheon. While the men and women of House Baratheon never bore the name Durandon, they were incredibly proud of their ancient heritage and the legacy of the Storm Kings that lived through them.